Hi, I'm Erica Fortes, and I'm here with Phil M. Creative's first Hollywood actor panel. And today I'm here with Eugene Cordero. Hi. How are you? I'm great. Wonderful. Is that the first question? <laughs> yes. How I'm doing? I'm great. <laughs> this is easy. I know. We keep it simple here. Good, good, good. <laughs> so listen, so what brings you out today to Phil M. Creative's first Hollywood actor panel? Um, I got approached about it and in, uh, in how I could help in the community. And if this is a way that I could help, then I'm totally down. I'd love to. Uh, support and uh, and maybe influence or you know answer some questions for some other Filipino actors that you know might be starting out or must be frustrated or might want to know how to like put some work in. Yeah, that's great. Actually, I was going to ask you about that because you are a teacher in the improv community. I am. Uh, we're here today at the clubhouse, which is great in the improv place awesome. in Los Angeles. Yeah. You can come hang out, watch shows, take classes. Do shows, yeah. Yeah. So, so what do you think as a teacher? What what representation is out there for Filipinos to be improvisers? Uh, to be improvisers, mm -hmm. there's plenty of room mm -hmm. for us, um, but uh, it's like if you want to take it, and uh, and it takes more than just like it. It takes for a bunch of you know Filipinos who all want to do it to do it. Uh, they can do it at different times, but to find each other and then you know, create that group uh, will take some time, but I, I think that there's room for it and like there's definitely a voice that needs to be heard as far as the Filipino improvisers are concerned. Uh, but in the meantime, I think that our individual voices as individuals, if you just want to do it by yourself or um, has to be represented a little bit more and I think that the more that uh, we make ourselves available, that the better that chance is going to happen. What advice would you give someone that maybe feels a little left out? Because it can be a little lonely out here. Yeah. Uh, you could feel isolated. You know, maybe you're trying and trying to get in with people and it doesn't quite work out. Yeah. What would you say to someone that, that's starting to feel maybe discouraged or, or just starting out and may not know anyone? Um, I would say that you, you think about it in that same way that you think about high school. Uh, which is scary, <laughs> yeah. which is very scary and very like, how are people going to judge me? What are they going to judge me on? How am I going to be happy? All of those things are going to happen. But then eventually you find a flow and you find a group of people that uh, appreciate what you're doing and you appreciate what they're doing. I can do brain surgery. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. On TV. On TV. I'm amazingly yeah. good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've heard that about you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's one of my skills. Right. My special you skill wrote that down, brain is fake yeah. brain surgery. <laughs> just the object work of brain surgery. Oh my god. <laughs> I think that was just cooking in a walk. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> It was uh, there was one piece of a brain in there, and then, <laughs> then some, some like some sugar, noodles. yeah, sugar snap piece. Right. <laughs> um, but then there's also just people that are selfish. I mean, especially in the acting community in general, right. for, regardless of improv. But mm -hmm. like, just I mean, people are out for themselves. It's you know, it's for your career. So um, you're gonna have to deal with some of those type of people, and like to brush them off. And, and like not worry so much about them and worry about the people that are supporting you because the improv is all about making your scene partner look good right and if um, you're trying to get in with people that don't really want you there then they're not gonna look make you look good right. but if you find a good core group which might be just three or four people mm -hmm. um, and they might be you know of different races or they might be also Filipino but I think it's just like being as open to whoever accepts you and if you accept them mm -hmm. as uh, anything else, then you'll be able to find at least the, um, the, uh, the right and, and the positive like comedic outlook on what you want to work on and what you want to do next. Mm. Yeah, and I, <coughs> and I find that too, like especially doing improv, there's so much support that's needed, right? Yeah. And you can tell, too. You can feel a vibe on positive energy. Yeah. Or if something's a little off. And it's crazy. Yeah. And I could, like, you know, there's moments where I can totally relate to, like, a 60-year-old woman who is taking a class mm. who's got, like, three grandkids and is in one of my classes. And everything that she brings up, I can relate to. It's strange, mm. you know? And I'm like, oh, well, if I was in this community and looking for a group, I would... Think of adding her to my group, even though, does it make sense career-wise? But this is all for your work. Mm -hmm. So it's like, yes, it does. I, it works because it gets you into, like, what is it about that 60-year-old 
grandmother of three that you're able to connect with or find the same things funny, if, like you can, you know, um, get into that mentality, then you've opened up your work.